uh, emissions or something. So when you look at a 3D printed object, you can kind of think about it like a loaf of bread. So you have, it's made out of maybe many, many slices, like if you were going to stack slices to make a loaf of bread, um, and how thick those slices are uh, can determine things. Um, then on the outside, you have the crust, so how thick that outside is can really uh, affect how, how, the, uh, how the bread performs. And then you have the inside, the infill or the sponge. And the sponge, uh, that's the density of the plastic. Uh, so we have one of our models to show you what that looks like. Um, so here you have, um, we can show you one of our models to kind of demonstrate what that looks like. So here we have a 5%. So these would be skulls that would be printed uh, solid. And so uh, you can see for most purposes, uh, this amount of filling on the inside is more than enough for, your, for uh, most uses of a 3D print. Um, we kind of default to this 12%. Uh, so that's the amount of volume that is filled uh, with plastic in the model. That's how we determine those percentages. A lot of it is done by uh, by algorithm, by, by the software that we use, and so that can be really helpful. Um, and we have a couple different patterns. We have this sort of hexagonal pattern, and then we also have a uh, just a simple diamond pattern that we can use, so depending. So that's basically infill. So when you, we talk about the sponge, uh, that's really what we're talking about. What does it look like on the inside? Even though it looks solid, this is what is going on inside of the model. So that way you can be um, really uh, efficient in your use of the plastic. Uh, this is about getting as much uh, performance as you can out of as little uh, material as you can, basically. Right, so. Now, the other thing you think about when you're looking at a 3D print uh, that's been built in this style is uh, support material. So if you'll notice, as he builds that arm, the tree limb, out into space, it starts to fall. Gravity is not kind to that tree. So what you want to do is you want to build up a little bit of material underneath it. So by the time he gets you know, out into space with that tree limb, it's not going to fall down. It's going to have something to, to support it. And so uh, in 3D printing, uh, especially once you start looking at the forums and what people recommend, uh, we will talk about support material a lot. So uh, this is generally, now it is uh, generated by our own, uh, by the software itself automatically. And so it's designed to be dense enough that it'll hold up the model when it gets to the model. It's basically material that the software is adding to your model uh, in order to make it print properly, print successfully. So in order for his, the brim of his hat not to fall down when it gets printed like the tree limb, then we go ahead and build up this stuff in front of his face. Uh, so it's dense enough that it'll hold up the brim of his hat, but uh, thin enough and um, loose enough that you can peel it away with your hands generally. So when you look at it, uh, your print, when we get it done, uh, we get it printed, it'll look like uh, that first before picture. And so when we say you have cleanup to do, that's really what we're talking about. So for, some, for a lot of people, um, minimizing how much support material you can use, or um, because it is kind of waste in many ways, um, determines you know, how efficient your printing skills are. Uh, so a lot of people might divide up the model or chop it up um, in order to avoid support material. So there is no cleanup and you can just uh, have your object done uh, and then assemble the pieces later. So we could probably slice him vertically in half and print his halves uh, side by side and have a much uh, cleaner model as far as um, it won't need as much support material as it goes out into space. So it won't go out into space. So that's support material. So a couple of questions you can ask yourself when you're thinking about 3D printing your project is, um, am I making a large number of these things? Uh, if they're really big, like uh, that bust that I showed you, maybe that's not the best thing to do. Uh, he took probably about 12 hours to print. Um, so if you're going to print a lot of him, that would take many, many days. So maybe it would be faster if you made a mold of the first one and reprinted it or reproduced it in a different fashion with a different technology. If it's very small, like those skulls I was showing you, or double, little double T's uh, that we have over here, that's going to be a lot faster. So you can print a lot of those in maybe just several hours or an hour. If you start getting much much larger, uh, we do have some cosplay people who use uh, our printers, and they chop up a full body set of armor and assemble it later. So you make the pieces, uh, you make it, the model as big as you like, and then you chop it into pieces that are printable and will fit in your printer. Um, another thing to consider is what will you be exposing this print to? Um, will this be uh, part of your car? Will this be uh, exposed to lab uh, environments? You know, are you going to expose it to a lot of heat? Are you going to expose it to any solvents? Uh, all those things, maybe you should check with your um, that, like samples of plastic to make sure they can tolerate um, those uh, conditions so you have the best performance. 
Um, so the most common plastics are going to be your ABS plastic and your PLA plastic. So uh, ABS plastic is like Lego plastic and it's a styrene, so it's not the best, but it is a higher temperature plastic that's a little bit more flexible. Um, PLA is a low, low temperature plastic, so it's a lot easier to print on a lot of printers. Um, it's going to be more popular. You have a lot more colors and different uh, variants to it. Um, it is somewhat based on corn, so some, there's some argument that it's safer for the environment, uh, but it is still plastic. And, uh, but I have heard that it does smell like pancakes, so maybe if you know, that's the determining factor for you, maybe that's where you go. Um, ABS melts uh, when exposed to acetone, but PLA is a little bit more resistant to acetone. So you know, a couple different, uh, you'll definitely want to get samples of the plastic before you go around and start printing a bunch of your models uh, for actual performance. These are our printers, uh, poly printers.